yes and me To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin Beginning to thaw from within Today and not tomorrow This morning half so clear a light as any To see the horizon in the far Excuses were two for a penny But they've all gone out the window of this car And when I feel the wind on my face Pretty naughty. Had a hard time muscling through it. Welcome back to the homestead. The sun's going down over your shoulder tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we're gonna talk about one of the probably one of the most asked questions we get a lot. Man, I want to live this lifestyle. How do you make some money doing it? And we talked about this in a previous video uh, that I've decided now to make money on our homestead with firewood and with wood, right? 
We'll do some other things with wood. We have the sawmill here. You guys are going to see some updates that are going on around here. I'm going to walk you around real quick. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, again, making money on your homestead so you guys can leave these jobs that you don't like and you guys can get on a homestead. Now, right now I'm starting off with just my, you know, um, high-end customer, regular homeowner log splitter, which is working fine. Uh, but obviously with this much uh, pad that I have here, I'm gonna be requiring faster uh, splitting, faster handling of the wood, less my handling of the wood, um, and a lot more automation. Splitter has to be able to keep up with production. And uh, for just myself right now, it's not really doing, it's kind of slow. But I enjoy cutting the wood so much that I don't mind doing it. Plus, you know, we're doing our homework. We're, we're talking through what we're gonna be doing up here, what kind of equipment we're gonna be using, because there's a lot of different ways you guys can approach this. And again, this is just one way that you guys can make money on your homestead. And we're doing it with a wood lot where we have a sawmill now, uh, we built this concrete pad, and we're also processing for firewood here. And I'm gonna walk you guys around real quick, just give you some updates, show you what's going on around the homestead. Uh, we haven't touched base in a little bit. And just so you see, we know we're not just sitting around and uh, you know playing on the internet or something. <laughs> it's been pretty busy around here. Stacy, if you didn't watch the video where Stacy fermented our whole garden, uh, we've been busy harvesting. We're about ready to get our second frost. Um, so the temperatures are going to drop quite a bit for us here and steadily stay, I think, in the highs in the 60s. We're in the Midwest, USA, Missouri, to be exact. Northern Missouri. Northeastern Missouri. <laughs> and uh, we got some cold weather moving in, a little something chilly. The leaves are already changing colors, as you guys could see. And so that's just kind of what's going on in the air around here. So I've been working on, uh, you know, getting the wood put up here, getting all this kind of stuff organized. And one of the really cool new things I'm gonna go show you is we started getting some logs in. Whew. So I've been hard at work up here, kind of organizing where I'm gonna be setting everything up, kind of like my workflow. Um, so I've decided that the firewood is gonna be over there and I'll give you guys a couple reasons why I set it up this way. And over here, we were gonna keep our logs. Uh, these are the logs actually for the firewood processing, okay? This row right here. And the tracks, uh, we got some new tracks on the skid steer. So I'm trying to uh, unload those. I think I have a buyer for them, some used uh, tracks, because I didn't wanna just turn them in and I didn't want them cutting them off or anything. So we're gonna recycle those, make a few bucks. But this right here, right now, is all, this is all red oak, this is all hardwood. We do all hardwood for our wood lot here. And uh, it looks pretty cool. And we're having a good time getting this all stacked, getting it ready. And what I plan on doing is having this row here all the way up and then having another row in front of it. And all this time, you know, while this stuff's sitting here, it's aging, it's curing, you know, it's, it's losing that moisture. And we got a couple of runs here to keep it up off the ground. So none of this stuff is uh, connected to the ground, so it's not sucking up any moisture. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this. And you guys are going to see me get through this pile and all this stuff unfold right here. And hopefully it gives you guys some good tips. This is a great family business for you guys. If you want to start a, a business, you know, at your homestead, there's lots of other things you could do. You can make soaps. You guys could do the bee thing. Dr. Leo is going to be here in the next video. Be here. <laughs> Dr. Leo will be here in the next video. We're going to be doing some honey extraction, talking about getting the beehives ready for winter. Over here we got a nugget. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see a lot of guys do it, but I've always been in the habit of trying to keep my implements up off the ground because this is metal and a lot of times the paint's wearing off of them because you guys are using them on the homestead, you know, scraping off the paint and that exposes the metal. And when it gets wet, that gives it some rust. And then if you just keep leaving your stuff out here, let's say you don't use the stuff for a while, it'll just start sinking into the dirt. And I've just seen it where it's just sitting in the dirt. I've seen two, three inches into the dirt, right? And then it just creates a rust band around them. So I have these pallets laying around that we like to recycle and reuse. So I always like to try to put my implements on top of the pallets when I'm not using them. And then that way it'll keep them out of the dirt, rust and water and, you know, just, you know, keeps them a little longer. That stuff's expensive. I want to make sure I get a long time out of it. Look over there, right over there, over there. 
See? It's another implement. Alright, now look over here. Over here. Right. There you go. Yeah, right over here. I mean, you guys been to the lumber yard lately? You guys can hardly get lumber. I mean, it's starting to show up a little bit more. But I know the guys are paying two to three times as much right now for treated lumber. And I think the regular lumber, um, just regular pine lumber, has increased in value as well. So what I have here are, are uh, what's called block logs around my neck of the woods. And I'll be able to get some dimensional lumber out of this. This is nine foot, 10 foot, seven foot, nine foot. So these are all good and they're able to be blocked. I can, and these are oak, right? So these are even better than pine. And I'll be able to uh, get my dimensional lumber out of these. And over here I have some 11 foot, 12 foot, and then I have some 15 footers. And then over there, we have some 17 footers and all that. So we're looking good on creating lumber for ourselves on the homestead, because that's another thing we are always focused on is you know becoming every year more sustainable, more independent, more doing for ourselves. And if you guys have been following along with our channel and stuff, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button, in case you didn't know, we're giving away a log cabin even. If we guys can get a million subscribers and a hundred million views by the end of the year, which is totally doable. We have about 900 videos on here that you guys can watch every single day. There's a lot of you guys going through the old videos and leaving comments. And I'm having fun with the banter that we're, uh, we're doing there. And I appreciate that too, because it shows that you guys are really trying. Uh, so hopefully you guys can win uh, the log cabin giveaway that we're doing. I never heard of that before um, on, on YouTube, giving away a log cabin. Um, but Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Lots of stuff going on around here. We're always teaching you guys about the homestead life, how you can make money, how you can grow your own food, preserve it, all that stuff. So, yeah, here, let's go look at this. Over here, 17 feet, yeah! There's my buddy Rambo. I guess he's over here. What are you doing, man? You got your scratching on? 17 feet, nice straight oak logs. Look at that, I love it. I'm, uh, I'm getting all nostalgic here. This is, uh, these are the kind of logs that we pulled out of the forest, you know, when we built our log cabin 10 years ago here on the homestead. Man, are you itchy or what? Huh? How you doing, buddy? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's not really interested in me right now. <laughs> all right. There you go. You guys digging it? And then this is the sawmill area here. We still have the 6,000 pound oak uh, that we'll be putting on the sawmill here just shortly. Um, I was talking with the Hudson guys and so there might be something going on with them. So I was giving them a day or two to figure it out. So if they don't get it figured out here in a second, we're going to move on with putting this on the, uh, on the sawmill and figuring it out. One of the other reasons, like someone asked me, um, they sent me an email and they were asking me about the decision of going with the wood lot, you know, the firewood processing. I can also make dimensional lumber for folks or cut a slab for somebody. A couple of people have already emailed me, you guys, about, uh, you know, maybe having some lumber come through here. So you could uh, definitely do that to make some money, but they were asking why did I choose this? And there's a couple of reasons why, okay? One is uh, me and Stacy talked about doing the market gardening, uh, you know, it's pretty intensive. You got to grow a lot of food. You got to drive it into town. And I'm telling you guys right now, that's not a problem. I mean, we know people doing it. You can actually do it and make good money. And Stacy just didn't want to do that. It just wasn't, we grow our own food. And now, like for us, that's a challenge enough. And we've been living off grid for 10 years and we're about to get a little more automation around here, as you can see. And that would help out a lot with, you know, watering and stuff. Uh, but I do know some of those same market gardeners who automated their systems and tried to go out of town and their system failed and their water went out all over the place. And you know, the well dried up or the pump overheated and, and uh, uh, cashed out on them. So there was a lot of issue there. Plus of course their crops suffered all that water. 
Um, so, you know, the automation isn't the end all be all, but it will help you guys, especially if you want to take breaks from your homestead. That's another reason why we don't have any milking animals here. A lot of people ask why you don't have a cow, why you don't have goats, uh, because we can get milk pretty easy here. So we have to pick our battles. And if we want to go out of town, we have our sons live out of town. And if we want to go visit them, or maybe we come to a function and see you guys, we don't want to have to worry about something that's being milked a couple times a day, right? Because no matter what, that animal has to be milked. It doesn't matter if you're sick or if you want to go on vacation or whatever's going on, that animal has to be taken care of. So that was just one thing that we decided early on that we didn't want to do, um, especially for people that watch our place. We don't want to have that extra chore involved. Some people that have watched our place are pretty new at homesteading. So the lighter you can make the load, the easier it is for you guys uh, to find help on your homestead. But I digress. <laughs> So they ask, why did we choose this? That's why. And another reason why is uh, like I've seen people with uh, meat birds, like you could sell meat birds. You guys could do a couple hundred meat birds a year, a couple times a year, and you guys could make money off of the meat birds. I know someone who started their homestead, um, was all excited about it with the meat birds. I think he had 500 meat birds, if I'm not mistaken. And they hadn't really been through heavy rains in their area yet. And you know where I'm going with this. So they had all the meat birds out there. They were all fat and plump, ready to go. And they had a big rainstorm. And those meat birds drowned right out there in the pasture. Okay? So that's another reason why we don't do the gardening and we don't do the animals because of the risk and all that kind of a jazz. You have to pick your battles. <laughs> so firewood, I don't have to bother it. If I want to take some time off, I can just leave it alone. And around here, it's kind of a necessary evil. Like a lot of people heat with wood or, you know, they like to have wood uh, burning pits in their yard and this kind of business, but no one really has the time to go out and cut the firewood. So you're always going to have clientele uh, with the firewood. So I like the firewood because I don't have to go out into the forest necessarily and harvest all this firewood myself. I am networking with um, lumberjacks in my neighborhood and with the help of those fellas I can get truckloads delivered here so that takes the risk out of me being in the woods in the first place. Uh, so that's kind of nice and I can get all this wood brought in, cut it up and still make a profit. And I'm gonna walk you guys through this whole process. So those are just some of the reasons why I went with the, uh, the wood. And I was already cutting wood like I started off in this video mentioning five, six cords a year just for Stacy and myself, maybe another quarter or two for neighbors. And you know what I mean? So I was ending up cutting seven, eight, nine cords a year anyways. So I just thought I like doing it already. If I can get some automa automation here, I can do it on a larger scale, provide firewood for my community, good firewood. There was many times uh, when Stacy and myself, when we first got out here, and honest to goodness, um, we would buy the firewood and they would say that it was dry and it was wet. And especially um, you guys that are brand new to this stuff, you have to be careful buying firewood. Uh, we bought a lot of wet firewood to cause it to smoke a lot. We don't get any heat out of it. And it was just a big mess, so that's one thing we're going to strive hard for is making sure that all the firewood that leaves here is going to be good for the community. Okay, so that's another aspect of it. And guess what's back on the property, in case you guys are following along, this is the uh, log lift trailer. So I finally got it all welded up by my local guy in town there, and so that looks pretty good. I'm going to show you guys how all this kind of works here coming up. We're going to go pull some uh, urban logs up around... Uh, you won't even believe it, in my, in my neighborhood, okay, in my area here, they have a dump where you can take your yard waste, and a lot of the guys take the trees down there, and there's huge piles of oak and maple, uh, chunks of trees just sitting down there. And I'm gonna take this down, I think on the maiden run, I'm gonna hook up, let me know in the comments below if you guys wanna see that, me taking this down to the local dump to get some nice chunks of wood for projects around the homestead because um, I want to do that pretty soon. If you don't want to see it, I'll skip it, and then I'll just show you guys uh, getting onto it. Uh, this is a 20-foot trailer, heavy-duty, 14,000-pound axles. I think this is probably the toughest uh, <laughs> log lift trailer on YouTube. All right. All right, I'm really excited about putting this thing into action, all right? So 
That's all I got for you guys tonight. I think Stacy's uh, ready for dinner. The sun's going down. It's been a busy day around the homestead. I wanted to catch you guys up on the wood lot. Um, if you haven't registered for the log cabin giveaway, please make sure you do that. If you got any questions about my log uh, business up here, <laughs> you can leave that down in the comments below. And then this will be it on all this stuff. We're just going to get on into our daily living and stuff. But I just want to drive home the ability for you guys to make decisions and, and to live the life you want to live. You watch these videos. I know some of you guys contact us in your 50s and your 55s and your 60s. I mean, you're, it's never too late. You just have to figure out what you can do and then work with that, you know. And possibly, you know, when we're getting a little older, we need a little less. Most of us, some of us, I don't know. <laughs> so maybe you don't have to make as much. You know what I'm, that's all I was getting at, but I don't know. So again, if you got any questions, leave them below. I'm gonna go get some grub on. Thanks for stopping by the homestead and we'll see you guys on the next video.